My next patron question is from Sonia, who is curious about another potential reason for the existence of the current crop of Disney remakes. I've been noticing something with certain Disney live-action remakes, to be specific, Lady and the Tramp, Dumbo, and Aladdin. The original animated versions have received criticism for, at best, inaccurate and, at worst, villainizing depictions of minority groups. Do you think another reason for the remakes are to make amends for these misrepresentations? I guess it's not out of the question that these remakes do try to make up for what the animated films did in the past. There's a reason some of them have disclaimers on Disney+. Plus. And no, it's not because of wokeness. Disney has always been conscious of their image and have tried to make amends for their earlier films for decades. For example, Sunflower the Centaur was cut out of Fantasia in 1969. Walt Disney himself ordered a scene from Three Little Pigs Alter due to its anti-Semitic implications and Aladdin changed a lyric in Arabian Nights for the film's home video release after complaints from Arab-American organizations. As time moves forward, what's considered acceptable in the past could now be looked down upon. It probably was not at all surprising that the Crows were not featured in the Dumbo remake. Then again, that remake went in a completely different direction from the animated film anyway. While Aladdin was criticized even in 1992 for how certain characters were drawn and the depiction of Agrabah, the live-action film went out of its way to be more respectful to the cultures depicted. Well, sort of. The filmmakers largely mixed different cultures together in its portrayal of Agrabah. Same applies to the cast, as Aladdin was played by Egyptian actor Mina Masood, Jasmine was played by Naomi Scott, who is of Indian descent, Jafar's actor, Moen Kanzari, is Tunisian, and the Sultan was played by Iranian actor, Naveed Negaban. These casting decisions drew some controversy, so even the remakes cannot escape criticism in that area. Sonia also brought up Lady and the Tramp in her question, and again, it's probably not surprising the remake changed the Siamese Cat song. The song they replaced it with still served the purpose of getting Lady into trouble in the story and without being potentially offensive. Interesting enough, while one of the most controversial elements of Peter Pan is the depiction of the Native American tribe, Disney's upcoming live-action film will still have Tiger Lily and will probably be a lot more respectful portrayal. And yes, they have cast an indigenous actress to play her, not Rooney Mara. Has Disney partly decided to make these remakes to correct the elements that have not aged well in the animated movies? To be honest, I think it's mostly because these remakes are successful and they want to capitalize on people's nostalgia. I'm sure dealing with some of the controversial parts of those films comes up in production meetings, but Disney certainly has not been erasing them from the public consciousness. When I finished watching the Lady and the Tramp remake on Disney+, Plus, a pop-up appeared that recommended I watch the original film. The same happened when I watched the Mulan remake. There is this absurd idea some people have that Disney is trying to replace the animated films, but I see far more people talk about the animated Beauty and the Beast and the original Lion King than I see them discuss the newer films. There are also those who think putting a disclaimer in front or not having them in children's profiles on Disney Plus means the company is banning them, and I think those people need to look up the definition of the word ban. On a related note, one thing I do dislike is when the people involved in the newer films feel the need to downgrade the animated films. Like they will say in interviews, how they were able to give more depth to the story than the animated movies could, or how their characters are a lot more three-dimensional. And I find that's kind of insulting, especially with how revered and beloved the original films are. That's why I really appreciate Jon Favreau. When he promoted his version of The Jungle Book, he frequently praised the 1967 film and expressed his admiration for the Nine Old Men. And as much as people have gripes about his Lion King remake, he never once referred to it as the superior version. He just saw it as another take on the story. Anyway, what are your own thoughts on the matter? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for your question, Sonia.